So at the Environmental Fluid Mechanics Laboratory at Notre Dame, we study the dynamics of natural fluid motions. That includes the atmospheric, oceanic, inland waters, as well as engineered flows, uh, which are, for example, uh, urban flows, as well as engineering uh, industrial flows. We really identify what are the current interest to the society. So that's our first step. Then we select few of them which we can handle and then we design programs. So the environment or Earth system usually have many, many different scales. Starting from tens of thousands of kilometers, which are large scale weather systems, large scale oceanic flows, and then into medium scales like highs and lows we hear in the TV every day. And then we have turbulence, which create havoc in the smaller scales. And then we also have things which we don't see, but which are very important. And we are very fortunate our funding agencies have supported us, uh, including the Wayne and Diana Murdy Fund at Notre Dame, Office of Naval Research, mainly the Marine Meteorology and Physical Oceanography programs, National Science Foundation, Office of, uh, uh, Office of Basic Research, uh, Department of Energy. Well, our lab has a whole suite of instruments um, ranging from, you know, kilometers big to the micro scales, but particularly I'm developing what's called the super combo probe, uh, which allows us to look at the micro scales of turbulence flow. So we can look at velocity in all three directions plus temperature data. So particularly we really want to develop this instrument because conventional atmospheric instruments cannot look at scales that small. Well, we don't like to reinvent the wheel. We will try to get as close as we can with a commercial piece of equipment and then we will build on it to get the data that we need. Such as a pressure transducer that can measure down to millimeters of water. Um, that doesn't exist. So uh, we needed that and we devised a way with uh, just with tubing and water in it to uh, measure slight changes in water pressure. The part of the problem that I end up uh, figuring out how to solve from down here is basically how to get the larger instrument array into the more complex finder situation, um, whether that's um, getting instruments on top of mountains or instruments that aren't supposed to be on ships, mounted on ships and recording accurately. Over the last seven years, there's not a lot of places uh, the equipment that we build and develop and, and maintain down here hasn't been. It's been in three different oceans, uh, tops of mountains in, in Europe and America and on both different coasts. Anywhere that it, uh, it can go, we'll, we'll put it. So largest project we have is on marine fog. It has a lot of implications on the visibility transportation and national defense because they are using high energy lasers now for defense purposes. Then fog is used as a portable uh, water source and also currently fog affects what they call the free scale communication. That means you send packets of information through light and that propagation is affected by fog. You can see a lot of, in, lot of uh, implication, practical implications for people for these small-scale phenomena. But prediction is very difficult because we don't understand the small scales. So we're trying to go back to the basics of trying to understand fundamentally what affects, all, affects fog or what um, affects the life cycle of fog. I'm personally looking to understand fog formation on the smallest scale, so how fog droplets really grow onto fog condensation nuclei, which for marine fog is sea salts mostly. So currently in kind of the conventional model of fog droplet growth. We don't really consider the role of turbulence in it, but like we're thinking that it really matters. So we're trying to look at the small scale turbulence and see how that affects fog droplet growth and eventually fog formation. So monsoon is the only season when the South Asian region gets rainfall. So this season is of paramount importance. It's a multi-scale system and it's a chaotic system. And our understanding of the coupling between the atmosphere and ocean is somewhat weak. So that's why it's challenging to, to predict how, how the system will evolve. This lab has been founded to work on a project uh, in Chicago. 
So that project involves using uh, large-scale models to provide boundary conditions and mesoscale modeling data. What these results uh, is useful for is to see to show that under different climate conditions, for example, in 50 years later, if there are increased amount of uh, urban space or there are less urban space, how that affects the urban environment. Would it make it hotter? Would it make it more humid? Uh, would it make the wind stronger? Overall, we would like to see that our fundamental understanding of physical processes and sometimes physical chemical processes are very well understood or understanding is advanced in, 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 in large steps. The second, we use that knowledge to uh, improve the modeling. And third thing is that the models we use to control, if possible, the environmental flows, especially the urban flows, which we have controlled because they are engineered. So we can use that, that modeling, improved modeling, to uh, better predict and control uh, flows in the environment.